Welcome to the November 23rd, 2015 Board of Trustees meeting. Tonight's moment of silence is dedicated to Victor B. Lane, father of Dave Lane, the father's township or the township's law director. He passed away this morning at 4:30 a.m., leaving his wife Jean of 64 years of marriage and six children. The family lived in Delhi for many years. He served his country in World War II, serving in the South Pacific for four years. So we'll have a moment of silence for Victor Lane and then the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with motions for consideration. Mr. Luby. Motion 2015-189, approve the minutes of the Board of Trustee meeting held on November 9th, 2015, and dispense with the reading. I move motion 2015-189 to approve the minutes of the meeting of November 9th. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2015-190, approve bills for payment. I move motion 2015-190 to approve the bills for payment. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion 2015-191, approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending November 10th, 2015. I move motion 2015-191, approving the payment of overtime. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion 2015-192, approve the seasonal terminations in the Parks and Recreation Department, effective November 23rd, 2015, of the following. Peggy J. Berninger, seasonal part-time gardener. Beth A. Rodersheimer, seasonal part-time gardener. Eric T. West, Seasonal Part-Time Activities Instructor 1. I move motion 2015-192, approving the seasonal terminations from the Parks and Recreation Department of Peggy Berninger, Beth Rodesheimer, and Eric West. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion 2015-193, accept the voluntary resignation, retirement of Gregory Lundy, Seasonal Part-Time Park Authority, Effective November 30th, 2015. I move motion 2015-193, accepting the voluntary resignation or retirement of Gregory Lundy. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion 2015-194, accept a voluntary resignation of Austin W. Brown, part-time firefighter EMT, effective November 23rd, 2015. I move motion 2015-194, accepting the voluntary resignation of Austin W. Brown from, from the Delhi Township Fire Department. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. There are no presentations tonight. Trustee Correspondence, Trustee Seavey. Um, I'd like to again congratulate our Delhi Township firefighter, Terry Doherty, on his retirement. And also would like to mention Greg Lundy's retirement from the Parks and Recreation Department. Those of you who have been through the Oak Hills school system, remember Mr. Lundy walking the halls, and he did a great job in our park system as well, and I'd like to just wish him the best on his retirement. Trustee Klug? I have nothing. And nothing for me tonight. Report from the fiscal officer? No report. There are no public hearings. There are no reports from department heads. So we'll move to reading of resolutions. Mr. Luby. Resolution 2015-218, resolution approving purchase order obligations incurred on behalf of the township by the township administrator, authorizing payment of certain purchase order obligations and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-219, resolution budgeting and amending revenues, making appropriations for expenses and various funds, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Uh, yes, this is doing two things, adjusting 2015 revenues in the parks budget uh, by $7,885.63 uh, in the other 
revenue um, category. Uh, it is due to the sale of a part truck on Gov deals. The second thing uh, is an additional appropriation of $3,411. Uh, this is utilizing some of that uh, tr truck sale dollars uh, to do a replacement of a sprayer. Um, and like I said, the sale of the park truck is helping uh, to us to do that. The sprayer that you do the lines with, the ball fields, it's uh, more or less seen way past its extended life. So this will help us uh, get this and be ready for next season. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-220, resolution employing Lane, Felix, and Raisenbeck Company, LPA, as legal counsel and appointing David C. Lane, law director, pursuant to revised code 504.15, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Uh, yes, this is where Dave normally would say what a pleasure it is for him to serve the township, which he does mean. Uh, and I do appreciate Dave, too. You know, of course, he's not here because of the passing of his father today. Uh, but uh, he uh, also uh, has, it's been at least the three years I've been here, and I think it's been more like five to six years or more that he ha has had any increase any increase in fees that he has charged the township. So we really have a resource here that we really appreciate Dave uh, and appreciate his efforts towards the township. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Clune? Yes. Resolution passes. I also did speak to Dave Lane today, and he asked me to express his gratitude to the board for renewing his appointment. So. Resolution 2015-221, resolution declaring certain items of personal property unfit for the use acquired, that the items have no value, authorizing disposal of salvage thereof, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Well, we're finally doing some cleanup of some uh, old old things. So this is all, everything on this is for destru destruction, and it's all from the IS department, uh, from battery backups to old work uh, workstation, um, more uh, backups, uh, old monitor. Um, it's just that kind of things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items that's been detailed out for you. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-222, resolution declaring certain property no longer needed for public use, obsolete and unfit for the use acquired, authorizing sale by internet auction, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. A discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum. Uh, this is things to be put on auction for gov deals. Uh, one is just some micro line ribbons from the IS department. So I, I, I'm thinking it's unused. It's new ribbons that we no longer can use. Don't have the uh, mm. same kind of printer style anymore. And the other thing is uh, other two things, but it's a total of 10 uh, snow tires, uh, one 16 inch, uh, I guess four of them are 16 inch and six of them are uh, 17 inch tires from the police department. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-223, resolution declaring to be public purpose certain public improvements which are necessary for the further development of certain parcels within the township and authorizing the township of a tax incentive agreement and, and establishing a tax increment equivalent fund and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Uh, this is really part of our economic uh, redevelopment uh, initiative. Uh, this is a new uh, tax increment financing, a new TIF. Uh, this is not additional tax. This is in lieu of taxes, so no, no taxes are increased as a result of this. 
Uh, but as as properties are able to, and these are all commercial properties, there's a total of 118 properties along the Delhi Pike corridor, along the same section that we did the plan. And as properties are uh, able to be redeveloped, uh, that increases the property in which we call that the tax increment, the increment amount as the valuation increases. What we're able to do with that money that comes to the TIF as it is incremented, um, it comes into the TIF, we're able to keep up with infrastructure uh, from the road to curb, sidewalk, sewer, uh, anything like that that can be an improvement to the area to help maintain the businesses around it, to keep it flowing, to you know, uh, hopefully encourage more businesses to come and so forth. Uh, to start this out, uh, the we met all the requirements of Ohio Revised Code. Uh, we sent out notices uh, by mail August 24th through the 24th. 21st through the 24th. All the information was posted to the township website. We held a public hearing September 30th, 2015. We notified the county, Oak Hill School District, and Great Oaks. Uh, all were notified about this. Uh, Oak Hills and Great Oaks have already signed and agreed to the new TIF uh, as they are made whole uh, with the TIF. Uh, as I said, it's 118 properties. It's a valuation of uh, $29,084,670 and a total acres of about 69.34 acres. Uh, here's a, just a snapshot of what we've had on our uh, website. And we've had a, basically there still is a what is a TIF and anybody wants more detail can click on that and it'll answer a lot of basic uh, TIF questions for you. Uh, and then there is the actual TIF map. Of course, anybody recognize uh, that area being our redevelopment area for our plan. Uh, the peach, peachish, orangish kind of color is the uh, new TIF uh, areas. And that will definitely help us as those properties uh, continue uh, to get redeveloped. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-224, resolution adopting the Delhi Township Strategic Redevelopment Plan, referring to the Zoning Commission for review, action, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Uh, yes, we had our fi finale on November 19th. Uh, we had approximately 70 uh, residents and guests show up. Uh, we were very excited for that. Um, all the information right up front is, again, on our website, Economic Development Strategic Redevelopment Plan. It's under Plan the Pike. You can get the whole strategic redevelopment plan just by clicking. You can also see the actual presentation that was given on Thursday, uh, Thursday night, as well as all the other reports. It's not just about the redevelopment plan. It's the facts that back up the plan, the residential and the market analysis that was completed. Uh, that, of course, the plan reveals some of those at a high level, uh, but the redevelopment, the uh, residential plan itself is 100 pages on its own, not including its appendixes. So, you know, there's a lot of information. Um, I know we had a hit on Facebook of, now this is kind of incredible, but, you know, we're a community of 30,000, basically, and we've had over 50,000 views on our posting of the pictures that we did. Uh, so, you know, it, that it, it stirred up a lot of people, you know, good ways, bad ways. Some people, you know, of course, given opinions without reading any material. And, of course, you expect that. Uh, but we encourage people to actually read the plan, look at it before you, you know, give an opinion on it. Maybe your opinion's still justified or maybe you find out we've addressed uh, many of your concerns. Uh, and it's not quite exactly what you thought. Sometimes, you know, we jump to conclusions way too quick. But in this, I wanted to share that um, the uh, public events, this one of the things we had is we had many public community events. We had April, June, August. We had 30-day public review period for the plan, and November 19th was our finale. We did, uh, again, thanks to all who participated, but including our oversight committee, which we did uh, acknowledge uh, last Thursday night. Uh, the stakeholders and all the professionals who actually conducted, who had interviews with us and their professional opinion from real estate, 
uh, zoning, er, er, you know, a lot of different people gave input into this uh, plan. How the plan is different, I went through this on Thursday night, but just for those that are watching by uh, TV or by video, uh, our plan is different than others that have been done in the past or even others around. Our community involvement is number one. I mean, we asked and asked and asked. Many of those meetings were, uh, were specifically just to listen to the community and what they wanted. And we set our vision, uh, this board has set the, the vision of what Delhi is to become based on that input. Uh, data and research, I mentioned. Half of the effort was developing real market or opportunities. If it couldn't really happen, it's not pie in the sky. This is viable and can really, really happen. And that's where I think a lot of people think it can't, but the homework has been done. Um, focus on implementation of realistic projects. Uh, so realities are driving these projects. If we found many times that what we thought we wanted to do, we literally could not do because the finances, it didn't work out. The numbers did not work out. So that drove us to look at other options. Uh, so implementation is a key. And the fourth thing was a plan inclu included conducting three pro formas on catalytic sites. So I think everybody's kind of familiar with the three sites now. You're talking the old hardware store. Uh, you're talking the, I'd call it the Delhi Chili Corner, but it's that whole kind of quarter, including our old Greenwell Fire Station. And uh, the Remke Plaza. So, you know, they were very uh, good at helping and work with us uh, through that, the landowners. And so uh, now implementation phase, uh, we're changing, adjusting the zoning codes or rules, regs. You know, of course, you heard it say, you know, referring that to the zoning and per the recommendations of the plan. And uh, we're going to be hitting the market, you know, marketing these three catalytic sites to developers and um, to those that are... Um, stakeholders that need something like, uh, you know, the university and so forth. So there's a, just a snapshot. There, like I said, there was about 70 people uh, or so that attended, and we're very thankful for the public uh, that we had. This is now uh, the board adopting this, and this will become the vision of the, uh, by which we will look at all developments in the future in that area with. Now, that will set the tone of the expectations and and uh, just uh, it's a pro it's a changing moment for Delhi and I'm, I'm proud to have uh, worked with it on the project. But now, in all seriousness, the work is just beginning. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion dispense with the second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Louie, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mrs. CV. Yes. Mrs. Klug. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-225. Resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into a design build agreement with Turner Construction related to the new Greenwell Avenue Fire Station project and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. A discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum. Okay, uh, just to review the firehouse process, we started this back in March. So now we are just now getting to the award. Um, we started in March 11th doing uh, by resolution 2015-029, which gave us the authority to advertise for a request for qualifications <laughs> for a criteria architect. We, we have, the board decided to use a design build, and a design build is, is fairly new. It's been around for maybe 2010, 2011. Um, it, is, it combines the architect and the general contractor, if you want to say, together under one roof. Um, there's many benefits I could go into, but basically when you're the go-between, as the township would be the go-between if we did not do a design build, um, and there, let's say there becomes a mistake, some flooring or something got poured wrong, the concrete. Well, then the architect said, no, see, it's here on this page. It's not my fault. And the contractor said, no, no, see, you messed up on this page, though. It's not my fault. Um, then who gets to pay for the damage or the charges? A lot of times that's end up in court after the project is done. Um, in the kind of design build, that kind of example, uh, it is the design builder, no matter whose fault it is, because the design builder has the architect under their wing. 
Uh, so we found very much benefit that to uh, there's less possibilities of go-betweens because ultimately now the design builder is responsible for the project. So with that, we advertised. We received three uh, RFQs. We awarded uh, uh, to KZF as the criteria architect uh, back in June 10th, 2015. Now the criteria architect is one that they help us design the qualifications, what we're looking for in a firehouse. And with Doug, uh, Ron Ripperger, and Chief Campbell, we are the ones that got together with uh, KZF and went through room by room what we wanted, what we desired, what we needed, uh, what we kind of needed, the, the size, the scope, all that kind of details. It literally probably was in, in excess, the RFQ and the RFP combined was probably in excess of a thousand pages of, of information that is given to the uh, uh, vendors that are bidding on this. So that's uh, the RFQ uh, for the KZF, that's what their functions are. Also KZF will act as our uh, case management basically. They're gonna uh, be our site manager for us as the project begins. So we uh, advertised uh, in July 8th uh, for the RFQ for design builders. We received seven, we ranked and scored them all, narrowed them down to the top three based on qualifications. Notice there's no price involved. Um, we selected a DER, Schuler, and Turner. We issued, after selecting the top three, we, of course, uh, told the, the, rest, the remaining that they did not make it. But uh, then the, we issued a request for proposal to the top three. Now, that's the more specific on what we want. Um, we conducted two preliminary submission meetings for each of the firms, so we had a lot of meetings. So we gave them the RFP that had all the additional information that we wanted, and then we had two meetings with each of them. And then at the end of that, they submitted. We received all three designs. We scored the designs. They did have to submit fee proposals on what their fees are and we scored all the proposals. Then we conducted the final presentation by the top three firms. So they gave a final uh, review of it in case we didn't understand what they submitted. We were allowed to you know, clarify questions and, and all of that. Uh, scoring, uh, the top, the highest score wins here. And of course you can tell Turner had a 2.78, that's 2.78 out of three, three being the max. Um, today, the resolution 2015-225 is to enter design build agreement with Turner Construction. Um, we, the next step on that will be uh, from present uh, on to February, March of 2016, we're going to be finalizing the design because what the design is not exactly final. We're going to be working on that and most importantly developing the final GMP which is a guaranteed max price. With all this, the, each designer, design firm, uh, was given a budget of $3 million. You're talking an uh, 11,500 square foot building. Um, that, that's tight, uh, but we had uh, actually two of the firms did not come in within budget, only one firm did and that is Turner. Now that is an estimate. Uh, they will be going out for bid on their subcontractors during this time probably of February and March after we finalize the design documents. We have to finalize them so they know this is the exact final design um, and at the time that they reach 50 percent of the construction documents that they're preparing they have to provide us the guaranteed maximum price. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on. We'll come back before the board in March or so, somewhere in there, with the guaranteed maximum price. It'll be a, um, an amendment to this contract, basically. Uh, of course, you know, we'll be, our, you know, be able to negotiate pricing, and if there's something that's too high or feel that's when we can try to, maybe we don't use that type of flooring or that type of this. You know, there's, there's uh, economical things that we can try. Um, and so what I'm getting ready to show, Chief Campbell, he's going to reveal, uh, this is the initial design of the outside. So what I'll have done is uh, we'll have that wheeled out 
uh, on the dolly out to the foyer so everybody can come up and look at it later. Uh, but if you would uh, put your attention up here, I'll play this video. So that will be our building there. Of course, you know, designs can change a little bit, but I think that's pretty concrete. One of the things we were impressed uh, with Turner on is that they purposely stole three, three different key elements from our three current firehouses and incorporated them into this design. So uh, you talk about representing the township. We did not want something that didn't represent the township. The roof line is the current green well. The, uh, the three peaks or the four peaks is repeated that we have on uh, um, a Rapid Run Firehouse has the dormers and uh, the, the first big peak kind of reminds you of the current uh, main firehouse uh, on Neb Road with the uh, firehouse, the, what do you call that? The tower. Tower, yeah. So, uh, of course, as you can see that uh, if you didn't notice mm -hmm. that, the included in this project is moving the uh, fire memorial that would be setting the foundation. We have to move the bricks. Uh, but uh, we were very impressed with uh, Turner on the seating and the benches of concrete. We never even thought about that. That was really amazing. The other one other comment that I'll make about this is that the, the round the back, one of the things is this is on a slope. Uh, it's not a flat piece of land like you might think up front. It slopes uh, very much. Uh, to the back of the property uh, going uh, east north northeast uh, it slants and with that they had the the driveway they had the you know we had some uh, of the vendors were trying to do 12 foot retaining walls uh, you know to try to make it flat uh, they used if you notice there was a place where a big wall was up against the building but then a nice eating out area so to speak under a patio uh, one of the things our fire department uh, guys really like and enjoy is just a private area that they can be outside. Most of the other fireplace stations, when they go outside right there just to try to eat or something like that, they have people staring at them or coming up to them. Now there's a time for that when they want to mingle with the uh, public, but a lot of times, hey, I'm just trying to eat my lunch. Uh, so it provides a nice uh, eating area, and they're very excited about that. So again, this is just the proposal as far as the design-wise. We will be working on this uh, for the next couple of months, and by March, uh, no later than March, we should have the guaranteed maximum price. Uh, we're with the uh, this going on like this, we'd uh, probably break ground in March, and with a uh, completion date probably by the end of 2016. So it's going to go quick. Turner's already in the community doing many other projects so I think that's why it was kind of easy for them to be right here already so that's the presentation uh, any questions 
I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-226, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 4301 Del Ryan Drive to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-227, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses of 557 Palmerston Drive to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-228, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 4426 Delhi Pike to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-229, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 4011 Delhi Pike to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-230, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 1219 Pine Knot Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you, Trustee Oswald. We received a complaint at this vacant property for excessive vegetation in the rear yard. We issued an informal order with no compliance. We inspected the property today and a violation still persists. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedures. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-231, resolution authorizing the issuance of a purchase order to Verizon Wireless to change the data plan for the fire department telemetry lines, authorizing the township administrator to execute necessary documents and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Chief Campbell? Yes, if you remember earlier uh, in the year, we adopted the uh, safety pad for electronic uh, patient care reporting. Each one of our cardiac monitors is outfitted with a telemetry unit that allows, in the event of a heart attack, to um, take a picture of the heart and send that EKG to a physician waiting in the ER. And that has to occur through data transmission. Then with our electronic patient care reporting, we also have to attach that report electronically. What that's done is it's increased our data usage. And what we've started to notice is that we need more data uh, than our current plan allowed. Uh, and in doing so, they reviewed our data usage. And what this purchase order allows Verizon to do is to meet our needs in, ter data, da in terms of data usage. And it's then the higher numbers are basically the max. We have all the, we're allowed to go allowable up to those high numbers, but what we're estimating is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300, 340 to 200 or $420 a year in terms of fees related to that. But this purchase out uh, order allows them to offer us more data than what we currently allow because we're over our current allotment. So without redoing the purchase order, we can't go to that higher data usage. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Klug? Yes. Resolution passes. 
I do not have any pink sheets, so there's no citizen comments tonight. Mr. Luby, announcement of community events. The Delhi Civic Association will have a food, clothing, books, and toy drive. It will be Sunday, November 29th, 2015. It will be from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Shiloh United Methodist Church parking lot. The Delhi Business Association Christmas Parade will be Saturday, December 5th, 2015. It will be from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Delhi Pike. And other announcements, the Delhi Township Veterans Association will again be giving out Christmas baskets to Delhi families of military personnel who are away from home during the holidays. To sign up a Delhi family, please call Bob Burke at 922-8229 or Joe Jones at 251-3515. There is need for executive session, Mr. Luby. Motion 2015-195 to retire to executive session to consider the compensation and employment of public employees. I've made motion 2015-195 to retire to executive session to consider the compensation and employment of public employees. Second the motion. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mrs. Clude? Yes. Motion passes. That concludes our regular meeting for tonight. Our next meeting for Delhi Township Board of Trustees will be Wednesday, December 9th, 2015 at 6 o'clock p.m. Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving and good night. <clears throat>